If you're wondering what your favorite musicians are doing these days now that they can't tour or play shows, they've most likely taken jobs as stockbrokers or psychic readers or something. But if they're like my guest in this episode, they found a way to ignite their creative fire by learning some new skills. Today I'm talking with Les Warner, former drummer of The Cult, Julian Lennon, Peter Green, Ronnie Montrose, and a long list of other legendary acts. Les now makes his home in Las Vegas, where he records, writes, and collaborates with musicians from literally all over the world. I caught up with Les to talk about his new creative process and how he's turned his living room into his own personal Abbey Road. Ladies and gentlemen, Les Warner. Les, how are you? Good. Glad I. So good to see you. I thought behind me, behind the socials. Started doing the washing up as we go on this podcast. No, <laughs> <laughs> right on. She never does the washing up, and she decides to do the washing up as soon as we go on the podcast. <laughs> no, I can't hear it, so I think it'll be. I'm right. kidding. I was just joking. Right on. Anyway, right on. so are you in your studio? Yes. Yeah. Um, I basically uh, took over my girlfriend's house. Yeah. No, so she. Uh, I moved when I moved in with her. I'm like, okay, so. This would be really great for the studio. And then I got behind me, I got my drums in the main room. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's really great. Uh, it's perfect, this house. Like my yeah. drum room is awesome. And uh, you know, this control room is just the right size. I've got some dampening on the wall and stuff. And uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's connected to the main room, um, but it, it works great. It works really good. Yeah, and you leave your drums in there and you have them all mic'd up and ready to go? Oh, yeah. I don't move them. They're just there. We, we sort of have two front rooms. Uh, we have on one side, we've got like this big TV and a couch. And then on the, on the left side, this big fire, right in front of the fireplace, we have the drum kit. Yeah. So, um, and we sort of ignore it when we're not using it. So, oh, what's that? You know. But we don't touch it. We just leave it there. I've got my sound uh, and that's it, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's right great. On. I'm very lucky. I'm very blessed. Very blessed. Right on. So, yeah, tell me what you've been doing in the last six months or so. I, I know you, as a result of, you know, all lockdowns and venues closing and stuff, you were kind of forced to expand your studio session work. And I'm sure that was kind of the impetus for building out the new studio. Why don't you tell me a little bit about that? So, um, basically, I did my last show on Fremont Street uh, on the... 14th of March, last March. Um, I was uh, pretty much making my living doing live shows, flying out with, uh, I was in a Tom Petty tribute band uh, and we were just flying all over the place and doing great work. I mean, because Tom passed last year or the year before uh, and it sort of opened up a lot of shows and uh, we put this great band together and the, the singer was, was just the embodiment of Tom, you know? And uh, so we were, we were doing that, which is awesome. Cause you know, I love like flying around the country, you know, at the weekends, it's just like, wow, life can't be better than that, you know? Um, and uh, so th that was the main thing I was doing. I was doing some session work in some studios here and there, um, bits and pieces, you know, side projects. Um, but I was pretty much keeping myself busy doing shows a lot. And then March came and obviously the pandemic started and wow, damn, you know, <laughs> what happened? I mean, you know, staying at home. I mean, I feel terrible for some of these musicians out there that don't have a studio. They don't have that outlet. You know, I feel very, uh, very blessed that I have this. And uh, so what I did, I basically got a loan. You know, there was a lot of loans going around at the time. Uh, and I, I basically upgraded my equipment to make this studio, you know, um, getting all the mics for the kit um, that I needed. I, I got a lot of information from different people. Joe Fatale, uh, Joe Walsh's drummer, who helped me a lot. He came, came up with some really great ideas for miking. Uh, and my drum room is phenomenal. It's, it's one of those rooms, for start, it's got a fireplace, big brick fireplace. The drums are in front of it, and then the room is so there's so many different angles, and it goes up about uh, about twenty foot, and it's all angled, which, which is perfect for a drum drum room because you know you don't want a square room, you want different angles, 
and I got my overhead mice really high up, very wide. Um, I got two kick mics, two snare mics, and uh, Joe uh, Batali told me about this butt mic, he calls it, right? And uh, it goes like two feet above me, behind, you know, just about hovers about there, and then you can press the hell out of it, you know? And it just really makes your drum sound incredible, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's been doing sessions for like, oh my God, 60, 50 years. You know, with Joe Walsh and Ted Nugent, and all so many people. Uh, so he really helped me, and uh, you know, I, so that's what I did at the beginning. And it was it was strange, you know, obviously for everybody. I mean, it was like, oh my god, you know, am I ever going to play on stage again? I, you miss the reaction from people. Um, so it, it was strange at first. It's like fish out of water, but uh, I, I just forced myself to really. Um, uh, embrace the studio work there was a lot of a lot of learning and i was learning uh, logic pro and i was learning about being an engineer my own engineer because uh you know i didn't want to rely on anyone which i had in the past as always an engineer or, or whatever i i wanted to be able to like get up in the morning have a cup of tea uh literally turn on my gear and bang knock out a drum track yeah that that was the idea um, and so I'm, I'm able, thank God, I've got a most wonderful girlfriend that lets me <laughs> get, you know, do this, you know, because a lot of uh, partners would, would not put up with it, you know, you're <laughs> nagging to death, but, um, she, she really loves it. She loves what I do. And, you know, she's always filming me and, you know, and, uh, putting stuff up on social media. Um, and, and it's, I've been, it's been good. I've been getting some work. It was a bit slow at first, but. So, you know, the word gets around and I I, I did a, a good deal with drum. I mean, I used to charge quite a bit of money, but I, I put my half my price for drum tracks, you know, I mean, but, you know, pandemic specials, you know, that type of deal. Uh, and it's great. And people can send me the files uh, like an MP3 or a WAV file of the track with no drums uh, and then a, an MP3 of like an idea of what they're looking for. Um, and I learn it. I, I got an electric kit over there, which I, I, I practice all my stuff. You know, I used to use it for practicing shows that I've been up and coming, you know. Um, so what I do is I learn the track on the electric kit with the headphones. And then when I'm ready, I, I put the, uh, the session together, put all the clicks together, all the, you know, um, tambourines and cowbells and stuff. Uh, and I, I got all my cues and stuff in there and I, and I knock out the track. You know, yeah. And I normally do a couple of versions so the the client is happy. Are you happy? You want me to change it? You know that type of thing. So, so they're happy, and then they they get basically fifteen stems of drums. Right. They get all the individual mics and room mics and everything, and they can manipulate it how they want. Right. You know. Well, yeah, and I can attest to this: the sound you're getting is fantastic. When you did the tracks for Antihero, we heard them. And we're like, do we even need to EQ this? Did he EQ them? It sounds, it almost, it already sounds like it's mixed. It was, it was phenomenal. <laughs> well, what I normally do, I normally do it. I send the the, the uh, stems out clean. That's what I try and do. Yeah. You know, even the butt mic, I, I don't even send out it with compression on it. I just send it out clean, uh, so you can really do whatever you want. But um, you know, Logic Pro is great, and I'm using the UAD. Uh, interface as well. I've got like uh, a 16 and an 8. Um, so all the drums are going through the pre sonuses and they're all, you know, I suppose the EQ and compressions are in there. Um, you know, I keep, as I say, I keep it pretty clean and I give the client, you know, you can use samples on it or whatever they want to do. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, I mean, it took some time to sort of get it working. And then again, it was the learning curve. <sighs> Damn. Sure. You know, it was it was rough, you know. I, I had to bring in people to help me, and, and I'm just about getting a real good grip of it now, where I can really run run a session uh, and be able to uh, everything to work. Because being an engineer, it mainly it's the troubleshooting is the is the problem. Yeah, you know, because you know the software and stuff it, it acts up. You know, it decides one day, well, you know, I don't want to do that today. And you've got to work out how, what's going on, you know? It, it can be very frustrating. But 
you know, time, I, every day I go to it, I work with it and I get better, I get better and better, you know? Right. It's a yeah. learning process. Sure, sure. So what's your criteria for choosing the projects that you work on? Well, Michael Caine, the actor, used to get a lot of crap thrown at him about taking any film. <laughs> you know, I mean, he was a working class actor, working class guy. So he basically took every film. You know what I mean? He never sort of, no, I'm not going to do that. So basically, I'm doing the Michael Caine uh, way of doing it. So as long as it's got a click and I can play with a click, I can do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, it, you know, it's, then it turns out, and I do the best job I can. I, I do, you know, whatever I do, you know. Um, so I, I pretty much don't turn down work. Is there a style of music that you prefer to play or you have more fun playing? I like, I don't like to be pigeonholed. And I've done t different types of music over the years. I mean, I played with uh, Bow Wow Wow, which is completely different from the, the cult stuff I did, the rock. I mean, you just throw away the handbook with Bow Wow Wow. It's, it's tribal. You have timbales on the kit. Uh, it's very tribal and it's interesting. It was great. I, and I love having, uh, I really enjoy, you know, uh, trying to do different things. You know, the challenge is awesome. Uh, and also what helped with that is uh, I was in, the, when I lived in New York during the nineties, uh, I did a bunch of session work there and then I joined an Irish band, a touring Irish band. And, yeah. and that music was really different from the rock 4-4 that I've been used to as well. You know, I think that's an, it's good because when you do different types of music and you can bring it into your style, then you do interesting stuff. You know what I mean? All the influences of different types of music into a rock thing and, and you come up with uh, individual stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah, right on. So tell me about this new project that you're working on with Rowan Robertson. That sounds exciting. Well, um, uh, Rowan and me worked together. We are doing the Rock Vault, raiding the Rock Vault show. Um, and uh, we, we worked together in the past, but when the pandemic happened, you know, he was looking for an outlet and, uh, and uh, he said, we know, why don't we do some writing? And uh, it was, you know, kind of do something. I'm going crazy, you know, um, and uh, creating music or creating anything is, is great for the soul. And, and it was just, you know, it was the right thing to do. So me and him lived in, in England at the same time. We grew up in England. And uh, we started writing, I write on bass and he's a guitar player. Um, and we started messing around and, and it seemed to really happen really easily. It, it's like we come up with this stuff and it's like, damn, that was, that was easy. And, and it feels good and it's got a vibe. Like every track we do has got a different vibe to it. You know, I mean, in the right genre, the same type, but each track is just like, wow, it's got its own identity. And the stuff came, it's coming out, it's coming out like the mix between Zeppelin, Bad Company, and Aerosmith, yeah. you know? And uh, we, we've actually taken uh, social distancing to a whole new level, because our singer is in India. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rowan found him on, on, uh, on uh, iTunes, and uh, he contacted him, and uh, he's incredible. This guy's, wow. Amazing. He's like Coverdale, uh, Glenn Hughes, um, mixed in together. He, he's just phenomenal, this guy. So we've been sending him tracks and he's been writing and he's been sending his vocal tracks back. Yeah. You know? And um, so we've been working with him and, he, and it's great. And he loves the stuff. Uh, he's actually in his own band in India and they're just being signed with uh, Frontier Records. So we have a little window right now to release like three tracks that we're, gonna, we're getting out in the next month or so. Uh, and then he's going to be signing with his band. So we'll see what happens with that. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, yeah. you know, we, we had to have that outlet, you know. I mean, he brought his marshals over here. I took over my girlfriend's closet. We put the marshal in the closet, two mics on it, or turns it up, you know, turn it up. Uh, and we're getting some great sounds, you know. 
Wow, fantastic. So when you're sending this singer, you're sending him your tracks, you're sending him your demos. I, I'm assuming they're instrumental. Are you giving him some guidelines on lyrics or melodic for the vocals? Well, first of all, we've been just sending him the track. I like, go for it, do whatever you want. There's been a couple of times where he's sort of like, I'm not sure what to do with this, blah, blah. And we've ended up, me and Rowan have ended up literally sitting down and writing lyrics. There's one song, Eye of the Storm, that we uh, we grabbed a couple of old books, you know, mystical books, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we never done this before, both of us. We've never really done this. I, all the lyrics I've done over the years are just so self-indulgent and horrible. But I thought, okay, let's do it a different way. We'd just get a couple of books that my girlfriend had lying around, you know, just like different sayings, you know, like mystical, uh, you know, weird sort of like run for the hills, you know, like all that sort of. Uh, and we, we put these lyrics together for him. Uh, and it worked out really good. So I'm like, okay, great, you know. So we sent him that and he's like, awesome. And he and he sang it and it came out really good. Wow, yeah, looking forward to hearing that when it comes out. Is there any plan that he'll be able to come to the country and do some shows with you guys? That's the thing, we, we, there's, no, there's nothing we can really plan on, you know, at, at yeah. this point. We, we just, we're just having fun with it and we're just getting it out there. And we, we know we'll see what happens from it. Maybe nothing will happen from it, but uh, it's good stuff. It's very good. It's got, you know, so if we have to get another singer maybe because he's with his band, that's what we'll have to do. Yeah. So everything's pretty much open right now. Right. But the yeah, main thing is, it's just having feeling the feeling of creating something is great. It's a great feeling. You know that. You know, uh, I heard some of your guitar playing is awesome. I love I love some of that stuff. Uh, it's, it's killer. You know. Oh wow! Thanks, man. Coming from you, that means a lot. Uh, yeah. No, but I totally get what you're saying. That's that's kind of the same thing that happened with me and and the people that I'm playing with. Is yeah, we just hunkered down and started writing, and and yeah. really, it was actually probably the most productive year in my life in that way in terms well, of yeah. writing and my guitar playing improved and uh yeah. and yeah like you I, I learned some new things you know I learned some new skills yeah, yeah. you need the outlet or either you're going to be just watching the bloody news and it's going to drive you nuts <laughs> you know at the beginning of the pandemic I was watching the news every day it's like what's going on what's going on it was it was killing me you know it was like oh my god this is awful you know, so I really had to get away from that and, and then just started doing something creative. Uh, and that sort of helped me a lot, you know, helped me just be calm and get on with what I've always been doing. I've always ignored the politics and all that crap, you know. Uh, I just, you know, I've been, just don't want to know about it. It's nothing we could do, you know what I mean? And so I just get, get on with my life and do what I do, you know. Yeah. Uh, and see what happens. Right, right. So the rumors I'm hearing right now is that, you know, the major venues probably are not going to open again until 2022. And I'm talking like the arenas, you know, the 15,000 yeah. seaters and up. Are you hearing kind of the same thing? Uh, I really haven't heard. Um, I know that I've, I've seen some like Garth Brooks or someone like that are doing T-Mobile or something in 2021 or so. I don't know. Oh, is that right? Um, okay. But it's, maybe it's been canceled. I don't know. That's the thing. I mean, I've got, a, I'm play, I play bass in a Kid Rock tribute as well, which is a lot of fun. That's awesome, you know. Uh, and we got a date the 3rd of um, July, you know, in a book, you know. And uh, so, I, but, uh, you know, you just really can't rely on it, you know. You just, uh, you know, if it happens, great. But I'm not going to sort of go out my way, um, you know, I'm just doing what I'm doing. So I'm not really stressing about doing live shows, yeah. not really. I want it to be the right situation when I go out. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, yeah. Yeah, but I, I can tell you, you know, crowds are, I mean, they are just dying to, to get out and, and hear live music. And just be, people, people that I talk to, you know, friends, there's nothing like a live experience. You know, the live stream is great. Okay, yeah, you can, you know, it's it's convenient, I guess, you know, for, for, the, for the audience, yeah, I, but it's I, not. I haven't even done any of those live streams. I just don't think it's worth doing. I, I really don't, you know, unless you're the Foo Fighters, you know what I mean? It just ain't, I don't know, it ain't worth doing it. You know, yeah. it's not the same. It ain't the same. And, you know, if I want to, you know, pay for a, you know, a live stream, I, I, I must just go to YouTube and watch Zeppelin back in the day or something, you know what I mean? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I'm not really bothered about that. Yeah, um, right. And I think uh, not only do audiences feel that way, but audiences maybe don't realize, but 
for musicians, it's it's not the same experience. I mean, there we we really depend on the audience interaction, their involvement, and and even you know to some degree taking cues from them. You know, do you do you build the music up? Do you you do you bring it down? Do you uh, try and get more intimate? You know that sort of thing. Yeah. Well, you never know. Maybe something positive will come out of this, and maybe when everything does get back to normal, actually people will come out and see local new bands because it didn't really happen. It wasn't happening before. There's too many distractions, you know, there's too many you know, phones and their computers and all this street, you know, and they didn't go out and see bands, you know? That's Which right, right. That's why, I, I, you know, I, I've stopped doing the local sort of gigs. I, I just like do shows that people pay a ticket to see what they want to see instead of just like doing a show and maybe some people will show up. I'm sort of done with that, you know. I was doing it for a little bit and it's, it's sort of soul destroying. And and I know I spoke to Paul about this and, you know, he, he told me that you guys, you know, you just do good support slots. And I think that's great. I think that's the best way because it, it doesn't ruin your vibe, you know, of like doing a show and it's like four people and a dog there, you know what I mean? <laughs> you right, know? right. Yeah, absolutely. No, but I think so. I think once uh, things start opening up again, you know, you're going to see, I, let's hope. Yeah, let's hope people have a, a new appreciation for yeah. local music li and yeah, just live music in general again, you know, kind of rediscover it. I, I, I really hope so. And, and yeah. again, based on people that I've been talking to and kind of the, the craving that they have for just being out and, and having a, any kind of experience, you know, in, in a live environment is, yeah, it, it tells me that it's, it, it could be good. Yeah, I mean, it's nothing like live, good live music, man. Good live, a good band. It's nothing like it. You know, nothing what I mean? in the world. Yeah, nothing in the you world. Know, there really ain't. You know, you know, it's just uh, a different animal. You know, it's just incredible. But uh, I'm looking forward to getting back on stage. I am. I want it to be the right situation. I want it to be, you know, a, a good experience. Yeah, right on. You know. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you play whatever project you end up doing next and bringing to the public. I, I definitely will be there. Absolutely. Right. And I've got a new website up as well. It's leswarner.com. So if anyone wants to check it out, you know, they can check it out and they can contact me through the website if they want drum tracks or anything, you know? Absolutely. So leswarner.com, L-E-S, right? Not L-E-Z? Yeah, L-E-S.com. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the brand new site that uh, this guy is phenomenal guy put together for me it's, it's totally awesome um so uh yeah i'm gonna get it out there right on well you heard it here everybody leswarner.com keep an eye out for les's new project with rowan robertson coming Which out in the next called, couple of months you called, said it's called custard pie oh cool <laughs> <laughs> perfect name too yeah it's right called on. custard pie we're working on logos for it right now which is really difficult oh my god i didn't realize how hard it was to find you find the right lettering you know for the band it's oh my god but sure, i got sure. working on it but uh it's just difficult you know yeah yeah all Work right well, cool all right uh, we'll look forward to seeing that so thanks again les it was really great talking with you yeah and you uh I'm glad you're doing well, man. And I'm actually hoping we'll get it to record some more music together very soon. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd yeah, be awesome. Right on. Cool. Man. Take All care. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Les Warner, professional drummer, bass player, producer. Warner to perform drums on your next project. You can reach him at 702-639-7715 or go to leswarner.com.